views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi guys, I'm M, also known as A Hungry Dominican, and I'm your host for Foodie Down Bronx. This is the show where we catch up with artists, entrepreneurs, chefs, and foodies who make a part of the incredible and ever-growing Bronx food scene. So if you'd like to eat, get your appetites ready, and stay tuned, from Bronx and to the world, this is Foodie Down Bronx. Welcome to Foodie Down Bronx. Stay connected to us on Instagram at BronxNetTV and Foodie Down Bronx and follow me at The Hungry Dominican. On today's Halloween themed show, we'll talk with two empowered women on different avenues of their food careers. Personal chef to Talib Kwali and founder of Unframed Palette Bean Brunch, Maritza Velasquez, aka Chef Mary V, and Halloween makeup expert, home cook, entrepreneur, and YouTuber, Amisha Sobgi, aka Meals by Misha. We'll get a chance to discuss personal motivations, goals, social media, and of course, food. But before we meet our guest, let's get into this week's Chew News. Dietitian Vanessa Imus might just be your new favorite person this Halloween. According to Ms. Imus, some Halloween candy is actually healthier than others. Ima says that eating something with a bit of fat and protein, like a chocolate bar with peanuts, is preferable over eating candy that is primarily sugar, like a Jolly Rancher or a lollipop. So if anyone asks you why you're stuffing your face with so many Snickers today, just tell them that dietitian said it's totally okay. But remember, you're probably still going to get a lot of cavities and your teeth will probably fall out. If you're a fan of Chipotle, then I've got some scary good news for you. If you show up to your local Chipotle store today in full costume, you'll be able to get a $4 burrito. But if you're also a user of TikTok, you can upload a video of yourself in full costume using the hashtag burrito and enter to win a year of free burritos. You have until 1 a.m. on November 1st to upload your video, and Chipotle will choose five videos with the most likes as the winners. But I will ask that you give some real heavy thought to how your body is going to react to an entire year of free burritos. Tread lightly, folks. When you think of the 4th of July, you think of barbecue. When you think of Thanksgiving, you think of turkeys. And now when you think of Halloween, you'll think of feet loaf. All right, sounds really gross. But a picture of severed feet made out of meatloaf has been making the rounds on social media, and it's proven to be a hit. While the recipe has been around for some time, more recently a picture shared by Richard Wilson a Tulsa rapper who goes by Little Rich, a.k.a. Crash, which honestly is really the best part of the story, has garnered over 28,000 likes and 9,000 retweets on Twitter, which really makes me question how we all spend our time on social media. Anyway, would you eat the feet loaf? Weigh in on today on our Instagram stories, at Foodie Down Bronx, and also on my page, The Hungry Dominican. And finally, we head over to the 167 stairs, those infamous Joker stairs that have been the subject of so many Instagram posts, opinion pieces, and is now officially everyone's favorite spot to take a picture in New York City. Now, I will say this. To those who push against the idea of tourists coming to their neighborhood and taking pictures of what essentially is a landmark, guys, this is New York City. The whole place is a landmark. All five boroughs are a tourist attraction. And for us to ask that people not come to our neighborhoods is counterproductive to the idea that the city is for everyone. Yes, tourists are annoying. Believe me, you've been one when you travel outside of New York. And yes, I understand the reasoning as to why so many Bronx locals don't want people taking pictures in a location that before the Joker movie even came out, no one was paying even any attention to. I get all that on a fundamental level. I empathize with the idea that outside folk means trouble for our hood, but don't ask people not to come into your neighborhood. What you need to do, and a lot of you have been doing this already, is ask those who do visit to patronize the local businesses in Highbridge. If you welcome them in instead of pushing back so fast, then perhaps they'll spend money in the community and everyone can hopefully benefit from that. The onus is really on the ones who visit the staircase. So if you're heading there tonight to celebrate Halloween, and especially if you are not from the Bronx, I ask that you spend some money at the corner store or head over with some friends to the local restaurants and not just dance and dash. Also, having said that, please be careful when you're doing your uh, Joker dance because the last thing you want is a video of you taking a dive dressed up as the Joker. Well, that's all for this week's Chew News, giving you a little food for thought. Grab yourselves a snack. Make sure it has peanuts in it. Foodie Down Bronx will be right back.
Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. My name is Harvey Lauer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. Love it. Cross-referencing travel sites. And booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh, But now they're like... <laughs> Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. My guest grew up right here in the Bronx and is well known not only for her brunch parties, but for also being Talib Kweli's personal chef. Please welcome to the show, Chef Mary V. <laughs> Hello, Chef. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. So you, uh, right before we started, uh, Taping, you told me I'm from where the Joker stairs are from. Yes. That's your neighborhood. Yes. So um, before, there's a lot that I want to talk to you about, but I definitely want to get your thoughts on what's been going on with the Joker stairs. You heard my little monologue there, my opinion. Um, <laughs> what is your opinion about what's been going on? You have tourists, not just from the States, but international. Yes. They're coming now to the Bronx, yes. and now it's become this hub. And I'm assuming that... Uh, Halloween night, it's going to be a pretty big deal. So how do you feel about what's been going on there? Well, I would like to say that, again, I didn't even know initially that this movie has been filmed there. Mm. And then when I seen the stairs, I was like, oh, the crap, That's familiar. These, these infamous stairs are the stairs <laughs> that I went down almost every day in my youth. So um, for the most part, what I say is that I do love that people are coming out to actually see this landmark mm -hmm. as we can call it now a landmark i think it's officially a landmark for sure uh, officially for now for sure. but again what do i i must say i have to agree to disagree with those people coming in is mm -hmm. because when it wasn't in the movie there was nothing there right. you weren't coming to the bronx right. just to take a photo you were coming to the bronx for the yankee game mm -hmm. and things of that sort and i love that you implement if you are coming just to take a photo please go to the corner store um please invest in the, the community mm -hmm. and building us up there because that was one of my biggest problems is that the community itself it's it's taken a long time to come up sure it's taken a long time to come up. sure and it I understand that, and um, you know, and again, it's like I I, I understand both sides. I, I try to be very open-minded when right. it comes to discussions about the Bronx in general. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I've lived in neighborhoods growing up where it's they. You know, I think I think the the core fear is that people think that, or you know, perhaps maybe they're right that once we get all this attention, then that might mean something very bad, and that's the big G word, gentrification, right. gentrification. or all of a sudden we have this spotlight. I've lived in neighborhoods where I've seen past and present. I've seen things change. Um, and, and so I can, I can understand where people's fear come, comes from. But I just feel like it's not so much about saying, hey, it's, we're okay with the change. It's more about, you know, let's, let's just sort of all work together to, as a, com as a community yes. to, to embrace what is inevitable. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and not so much give it a pushback, but say, hey, if you're at least going to be here, you know, patronize. Yes. Buy something. And also shop embrace the culture that was and embrace already the culture. there. Exactly. Opposed to, like you said, a big word you used was gentrifying. And that's what we are more scared of is the gentrification of it. Yes. We, for me at least, I know I would love to see the gentrification because I also know that would provide some type of... Uh, 
just more opportunities for the community to see that, again, there's people that's living this way, there's people that's living that way, mm -hmm. but we all can come together and be one and be this community. So I do like the fact that, again, people are coming over to see the stairs, mm -hmm. but can we do more than just see the stairs? Right. It's, it's, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag for sure. But uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, the least we could say to people is, all right, take your pictures, take dance your little Joker yeah. dance, but, you know, make sure you take your friends out and have some Absolutely. fun in that neighborhood. And then hopefully that could be beneficial to, to everyone yes, there. Yes, and research those actual restaurants that are, Absolutely. you know, for the community and yes. not just uh, the delis that's on every corner because I want to implement the nutrition that's coming in mm -hmm. to the Bronx. And that's where we have a lack of is the nutrition aspect. So, so let's, let's get into that because, um, I mean, there's, again, there's so much that I want to <laughs> talk to you about. But um, so let's, let's go kind of a little bit in order here. Nice. Um, Tell me about your history as a chef. You have about nine years, I believe, as a... Well, um, pro professionally, nine years. Nine I've years. been working as a chef for about 15, or I will say working on my craft for about okay. 15 years. Nine years professionally with Quali, mm -hmm. um, as he was the first person to actually believe in me and believe in my skills and what I have to offer. So, yes. So, take me through, through that timeline. How do we get from your love of food, which I'm assuming started at a young age... Yes right to you being Talib Kweli's personal chef. Take me to that ride. Okay, so um, as you said, it started off fairly young mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of stemmed off from the lack of food that I was able to get or reach. So the options that I w only had as a child was the McDonald's. Mm -hmm. if my, that's, again, if my mother wasn't cooking. But um, at a point in my time, my father actually got sick and my mother was taking care of my father for the most part. So again, for the options that I had, it was McDonald's, the KFC, the Popeyes, and things of that sort. Once I started seeing that that was the only options I had in my particular community, I started branching out more, looking into the, um, to the market, seeing what type of actual produce were being brought into the markets mm. and things of that sort. And then I went out to, you know, uh, Midtown and then downtown and compared. Like, why mm. is it that we're getting this produce and that area is getting a certain yeah. produce, you know? And it was just strange for me to actually grasp that idea that, hey, because you live in a minority area, you're getting the worst end of produce and food and you don't have options at that for food. Right, right. So that's where my journey stemmed from. And then, like I said, Kuali, um, roughly when I was about 20, I went out to California with him. Um, he had a huge gig for New Year's mm -hmm. and he actually asked if anyone wanted to eat. And I was Everyone is hungry. It's New Year's, right. you know. We had a little bit of drinks. Um, so he asked if we were hungry. When he did ask, he was like, oh, I know of a great restaurant. Once he'd done that, we sat down that day and there is when he actually offered me my position as a chef because wow. I started to talk about my background and what I came from mm -hmm. as a chef. And did you, so going back to uh, growing up in the Bronx, and I'm sure this is something that you brought up to Talib as well, mm -hmm. you were conscious of the fact at a young age that difference between yes. the food accessibility, right, that, yes. that you have in the Bronx versus going to Midtown. Yes. Right, it was, it, I feel like with me, it's like, yeah, I had the same feeling growing up, and, uh, but I didn't, you know, I didn't overly question it. I was sort of like, well, you know, it's what I have around me, so. Exactly. I'm not really going to, like, stress it, but. You were conscious. You knew that. You knew that going into Midtown Manhattan was completely different than the food options you had back home in the Bronx. Yes, I did. Right. I did. And again, like you said, I was extremely conscious at a young age, mm -hmm. and just going and seeing the difference made me start again my journey into food and actually looking at nutrition and seeing that it all lies with what we actually put in our bodies. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, illnesses, you know, feeling sick, diabetes, cancer, it all stems from what we're actually putting in our bodies. Most of the food here in the Bronx are processed. What are we getting out of processed foods? Mm -hmm. There's no nutrition in them. 
So what are we actually, we have to think to ourselves, what are we getting from? I, yeah, I, well, I think it's like, it's like a, it's a, it's a short burst of, of something oh, I, in I'm, our system, I'm, right? Yeah, I'm full but now. It, it, yeah, I, I, can, right. I can pass, but that's not the energy you actually need because it's going to drain you at the end of the day. Right. It's not healthy at all. It's going to take from you more than you actually believe it's putting into your system. Do you follow a specific type of diet um, or, well, I, I mean, I hate to use the word because I feel like, or, or, or a lifestyle. So I would say that my, li my lifestyle is more farm-to-table type of lifestyle, farm -to -table. if okay. you would like to say so. Okay. And I say that being that most of the sauces I make is straight from the farm and mm -hmm. it's produce based. Mm -hmm. So I do make my own barbecue sauce, my own hot sauce, right. my own uh, sofrito, which is m my sofrito actually is my main um, marinade for most of uh, my proteins. So, and I love that I created this because um, I feel like it's easy for moms to use or mm -hmm. people that's in school when they need something fast and they don't know what I can put into that um, right. or on the salmon to make that taste better. Mm -hmm. So I made a sofrito where you can just, you know, marinate your um, produce, I'm sorry, not produce, your proteins and things of that sort. You can actually make rice with the sofrito. Mm -hmm. um, it could be your base. So. Again, all of my so uh, my sauces start off with my produce, and it's I, uh, farm to tape. I read an interview with you that you uh, somebody had asked you about your sofrito, and uh, <laughs> you said that salt is something that you don't love to use. No. You'd rather sort of substitute your sofrito with, with uh, salt. Mm -hmm. Are there any um, things that you do not use when you, when, you, when you cook? Are there just any ingredients that you do not, you, you push aside, because you'd rather push a much more healthier lifestyle. Well, um, a lot of everyone loves butter. I would like to say <laughs> yeah, I love butter. Don't tell me you don't use butter. Please tell me I you use butter. I actually make my own butter. You make That's your own butter. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, well, okay. I make my own butter. So uh, I tell people I'm like your old granny curry. You're turning butter. Yeah, I'm turning <laughs> butter so in the corner. Yes, that's <laughs> me. Um, and it's pretty easy and logical actually when you make it you can use it uh, you can make it with your kids you can give them something to do while you're you know finishing the rest of <laughs> yeah. your yeah like you know it, and I say it's easy because literally you just need your um, your whole milk mm -hmm. or your cream rather and you're just shaking it until it's better right right that's it so it's a great it will be a great hobby for again kids for you just Put them in a corner. Do this for me for drink a while. Some water. Yeah, drink some water. It's an exercise. You can use it as an exercise. Right. You know, a lot of people are trying to lose this here, whatever fat you want to call it. So you can use it as an exercise. But I do um, make my own butter um, for the most part. I don't like to buy anything that's store bought. Anything mm. that that has a quote unquote shelf life. Right. I technically try to stay away from when it when it's bottled up, because mm -hmm. the FDA also allow 20 maggots in your canned produce. I mean, in your in your cans. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can understand. There's so many. There's so, so. many uh, arguments. <laughs> there's so many arguments against the idea of, yeah. of you know shopping for certain things that you can make. If you can make it fresh at home, why, why not? not? Right? <laughs> why not make it? Why not? That, that makes sense to me. Um, I want to go back. You had mentioned that your father became sick. Yes. And that's one of the reasons that you decided to jump into the world of food. Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your father's illness? So my father um, smoked cigarettes mm. for a long period of his time and life, rather. And when he was r roughly 42, he got cancer, mm -hmm. and it was throat cancer. They actually ended up taking out his vocal box and everything, so he has... Yeah, no vocal box, so it's hard for him to communicate with anyone else. Um, but I picked up to, not sign language, but I read lips pretty mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. so that's the way we communicate. Right. Also, he used uh, the muscles of his stomach to create a voice. But wow. when this actually occurred, being that my mother became somewhat of his caretaker, mm -hmm. I also knew that, again, I had to fend for myself or fend for myself and my siblings. Right. So there was, that was my reason in going into it besides the lack of, again, options mm -hmm. that I was able to seek out. If I did wanted a quick meal, there was lack of that. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I actually started off doing a 
topical cream for cancer patients or people who have minor um, pains, body pains, and that's with using either THC or CBD oil. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I had to, I, well, I felt that I had to create this because when you see a person taking 20 plus pills a day, and again, this is on a daily basis, and this is something that he has to daily, daily, and this mm. is for the rest of your life. It's mm. like no, there has to be something else. Absolutely, you're not telling me I have to take that, and then with one thing counteracting the other, and then counting no, right. we, we have to stop somewhere. Right. So with the body pains, I did help him out with that. Mm. Um, which is pretty amazing. That, that is amazing. Yeah. Because you do consider yourself a naturalist. Yes, I do right? consider myself a naturalist. No medicine over here mm -hmm. at all. So tell me about um, a little bit about CBD, THC, your usage for it. You have the cream. Um, do you cook with it? Do you make... Yes. Okay. I love cooking with it. Tell me about it. that because <laughs> I, am, I am fascinated by that. Um, I've been to some events in, uh, in Brooklyn um, some infused dinners, and uh, I'm an advocate for it. I have no problem with it. I feel like, you know, there's really nothing wrong right. with it. Um, I, I think it's still um, a very touchy subject with certain people. Yes. Um, even I used to have a problem admitting to people that I was pro it because I just felt like, you know, um, I, don't, I don't want certain folks to, to misunderstand me or, or judge me a certain way, but the older I've gotten, I'm like, who cares? Yep. It's, it's something that has so many benefits. Absolutely. Um, so what kind of meals do you make with... Um, well, um, I can make anything and everything mm -hmm. with CBD or THC. Mm -hmm. it's for um, that fact, it just basically have to have a fat component right. for it to stick to. Okay. So anything, again, uh, I can create. Uh, my last... Dinner, I did make a cannabis infused sea bass, which was excellent. It was Sounds delicious. It was absolutely <laughs> amazing. Um, and for the most part, I actually got into cooking with cannabis because, again, my father having that illness and right. having a lot of body pains. Right. So taking away that from his body pains, as well as I don't ever mention to anyone, but I actually suffer from scoliosis. Um, and it helps me out, mm. being that I don't take medicine as well, and right. that was my only type of medicine and my only relief. I see. Um, so with that being said, THC is THC and CBD are two different plants. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, we can get CBD oil and products. I want to say. Almost everywhere it now. Seems like it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it seems it's like it's pretty, pretty broad. Pretty you can broad. get it in yeah. uh, Delhi or whatever. Um, THC, you're not going to find as much, and it's because of the government, as we know, sure. and course. legally. <laughs> but again, either one I like to cook with. I do know, obviously, we know that THC does come out in the bloodstream, so that's the reason why people have it all separated. Right. And Again, um, I, I do want to continue that conversation when we come back. I, I want to talk about the differences between both and uh, a little bit more about um, scoliosis. Yes, that you uh, you have. All right, guys, grab yourselves a snack. Foodie down Bronx. We'll be right back. For all the papas out there, let's stop what we're doing and take a moment—a moment to be with our kids. They can be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments, kooky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count because every time dads take a moment to be with their kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's all take a moment to make a moment today.
We are neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican, and I'm joined on set by Chef Mary V. So, Chef, um, this is our very cool little cooking location here. Yes, um, yes. Can you tell me what we're going to dive into? Because I see some scripts. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, today we have some scrimps, like mm -hmm. you said, and we have um, some spinach. We have our buttered rolls, avocado, carrots, pears, awesome. you know. A little bit awesome. of the whole nine. So I'm so, assuming this this all smells and looks like po' boy. Yes, is what we're doing? it is. It is. Okay. So we're doing some shrimp fall po' boys. Fall. And okay. Fall because this is usually this is a summer food. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I I would like to say so. Okay. Summer, spring, usually we'll go for that po' boy, but my whole twist mm. is that I actually add pears. 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 I've never had po' boy with pears. Yes, okay. I know, I okay. know. It's my thing. Of course Very you cool. did. <laughs> but, Very cool. Um, so, pears is also a fall mm -hmm. fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to like kick them out of the window and just think that apples the, the main <laughs> fruit. But pears is something that we should definitely be indulging in this fall. Mm -hmm. So that's why I implement that. Also, I think it's such a great, great, small, decadent sandwich you can actually pack for your kids. You can, uh, we have football nights, you know, there's the NBA is back. I know everybody mm -hmm. is watching that. Absolutely. So this is something fun, small, simple, easy peasy, nice. beautiful, cup of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, so before we took our break, um, I had said that I wanted to talk more about um, your scoliosis and THC and CBD. Yes, um, yes, yes. So how do you do you? So I'm, I'm assuming you use your own cream on you as well, or yes. or how do you? How else do you do deal with your scoliosis? So I deal with my scoliosis um, by food as mm -hmm. well. So the ingestion of uh, CBD or THC. So the difference again from C CBD is that it wouldn't get you high technically, right? Right. And uh, THC. Well, right. that's the chemical component and the only big difference. CBD is, uh, is going to make you feel relaxed and get all of those tensions, help with you with your anxiety if mm -hmm. you happen to have that. Um, again, arthritis pain is really great for arthritis pain. And it just all, I would say it attests to the person. Because again, I do either CBD or THC, it just depends on where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. Yes. <laughs> what kind of day you've had or kind of what kind had. of you know buzz you want. Absolutely. Right, yes. Right, right. So it varies, right? Um, let me ask you about C B D. Is there a um, how much do you have to use in order to actually feel something? because um, again it does it does, you know, it, it's all about the person really and, and kind of where they are mentally and what they're looking for. But is there a certain amount of dosage or, or, or how much do you have to use to actually feel something? Because I feel, because we had mentioned that CBD seems to be so ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Right. And a lot of it can't be real. No. You know, no. so is there a proper way to use it, or how much do you have to? Again, I, I say that actually varies on what product you're buying. Right. Where you're buying it from. Where you're buying it from. Because yeah. it all depends on the extraction. Sure. Of sure. Okay. The plant. Okay. So that, like, I per se, 3.5 mm -hmm. is great. It's great. You don't need anything more than that. Right. You're not going to get anywhere. Again, CBD is not going to get you high. Right. It's, it's just so it's more about that calming so effect. It's, that yeah, it's, it's the calming effect, okay. and you will definitely reach that. Okay. Um, is any of this um, infused? No, I'm just wondering. I, I mean, would you know. love. I would love. <laughs> but this is my sofrito, mm -hmm. actually. Oh, that's just okay. Awesome. Yes. That I can mix infuse or mm -hmm. not infuse and again this is a marinade that you can put can i just like dip my head in there absolutely oh wow that's nice isn't it that's very nice <laughs> isn't it? oh that's my god nice. like this is amazing you can chicken shrimp your vegetables Anything. make your rice beans oh my god beans. yes for sure beans yes. beans you <laughs> put that in your beans that's it. You're you don't done. have to put anything That's else. That's Your it. Your beans are, are perfect. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, let's start making this. But I also want to ask you about 
your unframed palette. Ooh. Tell me about that um, because I, I love the, the concept. I'm not going to say what the concept is, but I did find out what it was and I think it's very, very cool. So tell me a little bit about that. People see me and the first thing they think is, oh, she must be a model. Mm. And that's where actually unframed palette came from. Mm. It's like, don't, un don't place me in a box. I, I did read about you had an experience at a um, Michelin restaurant. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I feel like that's where the concept yes. of Unframed Palette came from. Right? Absolutely. Because as you said, people see you, people will just look at you, assume something right, right off the bat, and then you're nothing more than just this pretty thing right. and that's it, right? So that's, but you, but again, tell me about your experience in this restaurant. What exactly happened? So as I said, people see me, the first thing they think initially is that I'm a model. Um, so as a chef and knowing myself and knowing the career path I, will, I wanted to go into as a young age, mm. I would go into restaurants and try to apply and be an asset as I would consider myself. Right. And the first thing that would come out is, you'll be a distraction in the kitchen. Mm. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. A distraction, but what about my skills? Right. So yes, that's where Unframe Me started from. Mm -hmm. It's don't place me in that box. Right. Please ask me a question prior to you just disclosing who you believe I am. Mm -hmm. Because I am more than just a face. Right. I am more than just my hands. I am more than just my color. Mm -hmm. I am a whole mogul. Right, right. That's definitely dipping in different avenues in her life and it's looking to grow and to continue grow. So unframed palette is an umbrella, an umbrella right. of what I'm about to take on. Very nice. So you, you clearly, you've, you've been through that, not just in the uh, restaurant industry or the food, it's, it's sort of the thing you've always dealt with. Always, right? always, and, anywhere and, I go. And you felt like you've always been uh, mischaracterized. Absolutely. As soon as somebody sees you, right? Yeah, I understand that. As, I, like, the I understand moment. that because I, I um, because you know I'm so beautiful. <laughs> no, it's not, it's uh, I understand that because <laughs> I, <are>. I, I <laughs> um, because I, I um, you know I've, I've been dipping my toes into the food world and I that's exactly what I I, I hear that a lot, um, especially from female You're chefs. Not a chef. uh, no, no, but I, I, you know, I know a lot of chefs. I know a lot, I, I'm in that world, and that's something that. You know, you start finding out what the um, workplace rituals are. Oh, yes. What certain biases happen in certain mm -hmm. workplaces. And that's the one thing that sort of is high on the list of people in the food industry, especially with female chefs. Yes. I can't work here or someone doesn't take me seriously enough because of the way that I look. Absolutely. So that I can understand where you're coming There's from. There's not many sense. restaurants that you will see an executive female chef. Right. You can see an executive pastry chef that's female, right? Sure. Sure. But have you seen an executive female chef? Yeah. No, I don't think I have. I Not I have. many. All right, so let's get back to this uh, fall pull boy. So here we're going to just add in our Some of that mix. Potato salad looking. Is it our <laughs> potato salad shrimp. looking mix, which is actually shrimp. And that looks again, so the delicious. cream here, guys, okay. now. So I personally don't like mayo. Mm. You don't like mayo. I don't so like mayo. I'm gonna give mayo. you a look right now. This I is, know. I give that look. I usually get really that look. Really nuts right now. Okay, so we could give each okay, other. Okay, yeah, we're. So right. we <laughs> you don't like mayo. I don't like mayo. Okay. But what we added in here, we can um, add uh, cashew butter, which oh, nice. is okay. awesome okay. to use. Ranch, if you like sour cream, any of those act components will work with this. Perfect. And then again, you want to make sure you don't forget your avocado. All right, we have some avocado. What else did we sprinkle on top of this right here? Just a little bit of scallions and mm. carrots. Mm, also, okay. we cannot forget the cilantro. Cilantro, right? Of course. Which is, I believe, your favorite thing to cook with. Oh my gosh! Right? I cannot cook without cilantro you can't nor live without it? garlic. Cilantro and garlic. Those two things you have to have in or your kitchen. Oregano, holy. Yeah. So cilantro, garlic, oregano are the three things you have to have in your kitchen Must all the time. Must have. Ooh, okay, fantastic. All right, so I'm going to take a bite of this. Um, I'm going to probably make a huge mess, so I apologize in advance. But it's how I do it. Yes. But this looks super, super delicious. I need to know. How Should I? Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I love this. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me take a quick picture because this is super cool. Great. This looks really great. I think I should take a photo of course. as well. Definitely take a picture before I... 
Scarf it down. Uh, yeah, you know it's not going to happen. Okay, here I go. <laughs> here I go. This looks really awesome. Mmm. Mmm, delicious. How is it? Bravo. Bravo, chef. Do you like very it? Very good. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> um, the pears are actually a beautiful addition to that. That's right? great. Um, okay, guys. Stay connected with Chef Mary V on Instagram at Chef Mary V. An unframed palette will be taking place on Sunday, November 3rd from 2 to 7. Visit eventbrite.com and type in unframed palette brunch. We're taking a quick break. Foodie on Bronx will be right back. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in. Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. In four days. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Bye. She had so many children. She didn't know what to do. Did you have a good day at school? She gave them some broth. Without any bread. Kiss them all soundly. Night night. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, Anne, the Hungry Dominican. Our next guest is a Jane of all trades from the Bronx, a local 79 construction worker, self taught hairstylist, nail technician, and makeup artist, food lover, and cook. Wow who showcases her work on a growing YouTube page and social media. She recently started her own food business, Meals by Nisha, and specializes in special effects makeup and creating spooky looks for Halloween season. Welcome, Amisha Chope, AKA Meals by Misha. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being on the show. What, I don't even know, are, I don't even know if I should call you chef or what am I gonna call you? You do so call, many things. Call me whatever you want. Wow, this is really impressive. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is, okay, hold on. I don't even know where to start. So, constru construction. Tell me everything, okay. everything that you do. Um, well, I've been doing construction for about uh, 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, local 79. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Gosh, honestly, I never really thought about being in construction. If you was to ask me how I got there, I wouldn't even know. Right. But it has gotten me through. I honestly love it. And yeah, how, did you, I mean, how did you get involved in that? Because again, you do so much and like, I'm trying to make the connection between each profession, but there's like nothing it's so different. Well, I went to a vocational high school, okay. um, which consists of mostly boys. Um, I took up HVAC, H HVAC technician, sure, sure, so okay. I'm certified to do that. Mm -hmm. And straight out of high school, um, I had the opportunity to be in the union mm -hmm. or like pretty much pursue what I wanted to do which is pretty much performing arts, but um, uh, I literally I filled out the application. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think that I would ever get a call, so I just filled it out just to fill it out to have something under my belt, and they called me, and next thing you know, I've been doing this for like 10 years. Wow. So it's, it's such a dope thing because I literally get to watch the, the, the city build. Mm -hmm. You know, like we build the city, right. so it's... It's a beautiful experience. Yeah, that's, that's really incredible. Um, which, uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming you work all over New York. Yes. So can, are there any specific places that, you know, in the last few years? That I've... Um, that you've been a part of, project-wise? Oh, yeah. I worked on Yankee Stadium. Well, that was a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when they built their whole new Yankee Stadium. Wow. And right now I'm working on a city building, um, working for Turner Construction. Mm -hmm. Um, that's on Canal Street, so we do like a lot of commercial buildings also. A, li a lot less of residential, but right. it's mostly commercial. 
that's, so that's cool. incredible. So, mm -hmm. um, so if I'm following the timeline correctly, you did construction before you jumped into cooking. Yes. Um, but I'm assuming cooking was always a love of yours, a passion of yours, something you were always into, or maybe it was not. See. Mm. Uh, Hmm. So you don't even you, know where you to start. You got me there. So no, you got me <laughs> you there. You do so much, you don't even know where to start. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't even know how I do it sometimes, you know. So I get that question a lot. But cooking for me, uh, I used to watch my grandmother cook mm -hmm. before she passed. My mom cooks, my aunt cooks, and I'm talking about they cook with love. So mm -hmm. I used to just, like, watch them, especially my dad. He's African, so he cooks so many African dishes. So I would literally watch him and watch them and then... With me, presentation is key, mm -hmm. like when it comes to food, but it also has to taste as good as it looks. Right, of course. Of for course. me, but I don't know. I just, like, if I want to make something, I'll probably look it up on YouTube and see, like, how to do it. I'll add my own touches to it. Right. And I'm like, holy crap, like, it, it comes out, like, really great. So right. I just, cooking has be become something. So like I'm in love. It's safe to say that you're a self-taught cook. Yes, right? absolutely. You just sort of I absorbed what that. you saw your family doing, and then you sort mm -hmm. of took that into, into the next level. Yes. Um, so you, um, you, again, you do so much <laughs> cosmetology. I mean, every. Uh, how did you fall into all of these other professions? So construction was really the first thing you did professionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what came next? Was it um, your special um, effects makeup? Was your cooking next? Or did it all sort of happen... Seemingly at the same time. I would say construction, obviously construction was first. Uh, I would say the SFX makeup came last because I'm like a Halloween fiend. I love Halloween. I just love the fact that you get to dress up and do mm. so much stuff. It was one particular night I was at work and um, I was working late and it was Halloween night. And I'm just like, there's no way I cannot not dress up for Halloween. Right. I don't care if I get up at 12 o'clock at night. I'm going to do <laughs> something. So that was actually my first time. I think it was 2011. It was my first time actually trying out, like, like working with latex and stuff like that. Um, and I tried to give myself a zombie look, and mm. I was like, wow. Like, you know, it came out pretty nice. I would start to use my brother's face, my sister's face, and I'm like, let me try to do the skeleton. Let me do this. And then it just sort of practice makes perfect, there. yeah. So is it safe to say that you were a... Uh fan of horror movies growing up? I mean, did you? Oh, no. No. Mm -mm. Oh, really? No, okay. I'm still not. Really? <laughs> wow. It's so crazy. But, but I know. you take so much inspiration from but them. I love it. I love it. Wow. I, like, I cannot... I'm a punk. I, yeah, say what you want. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm kind of scared of horror movies. Some of them I can watch, but okay. I, I, I'll do the makeup for you, but I just cannot... So which ones are the ones that you're okay watching? Like the PG-13 You know what I'm really scared? Like, Chucky really scares me. Chucky. And, and it's so weird because you'd be like, oh, he's a doll, but, the, well, the old, because, you know, they like to remake new movies. Right. The, like We're talking the old about movies. The, the, the OG I'm talking ones. about the old ones. Yeah, like, sure, movies sure. like Carrie, Chucky, and, be, like, um, Boogie, the Boogeyman. Mm. I, I, God, well, I feel God. like, I mean, with the older movies, you, you, they definitely used, um, you see more of the pr practical effects. Yeah. And the actual makeup as opposed to, like, mm -hmm. the CGI and whatever they do nowadays. So I feel like, I mean, have you seen something like The Thing? where it's this incredible, you know, alien movie where you just have the grossest things happen. It's all practical effects. It's amazing makeup, things like that. I'm assuming from your face you have not seen The Thing. I don't and think so, And if you're afraid so, of horror no. movies, don't even watch The Thing. Don't worry about no, it. No, I'm, I'm curious. I'm interested now, so. I just, I just assume because you do, you do such a great job, and I've seen Thank some of you. your work that I was like, oh, she's a horror fiend. She Thank loves you. all types of horror movies, mm -mm. and you so, sort of absorb that. And I, actually, I, mean, I don't mind it, but I don't love it. <laughs> Um, you, you, I was supposed to, I wanted to come in today and I wanted you to paint me up as the Joker, no. um, but we couldn't do it because of my, of my luscious <laughs> facial hair. So much <laughs> So much facial um, So we couldn't do it, but you actually um, took one of our staff members here, Abraham, yes. and you, you made him up to look mm -hmm. like... The Joker. Uh, the Joker. <laughs> I like to call him Martha Fleck because in the movie it's like he's not really the Joker until the end. But okay. you know, either way, you did a great job. Thank you. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I, I think I'm still going to hit you up probably like sometime and be like, of course. I'll take this off and please, you know, make me up as a Joker. <laughs> I got um, you. <laughs> and then I found out that you you didn't even see the movie either. You just no, sort I of, didn't. You know the, still... the you know the reference. Mm -hmm. You know the yeah. That's amazing. Especially with social media is everywhere, and then. Right. You have so many of the other makeup artists recreating the look. So sure. I'm just like, this so is pretty cool. It's kind of like in your timeline, yeah. you see it on, on social, Absolutely. you see all those things. Um, I want to talk about your entrepreneurship. You know, you have all these things going on, and you you do your cooking, I'm assuming, out of your home. Yes, I cook While home. you're doing all of these full-time jobs and everything else. Yes. So you have, uh, is it like a meal prep, or, or what do you do with your food exactly? How do you... Um, 
How do people get to taste your food? And on okay, so honestly, this wasn't. I originally wasn't supposed to like sell my food or anything. Like mm. I would just cook. I would take a picture of it, and people was like, "Oh my God! Like that looks so good. How mm. much? How much?" And right. I'm just like. You know, like, I don't know, it's not for sale. Right. And then I'm just like, you know what, like, so many people kept, re like, asking. They, they would just require it. So I just made a separate page for my food, okay. and I built my clientele over there. So um, I would usually do, I would do pickup, and I would do pickups in different boroughs because I'm not yet mobile. Right. So, you know, I would be in the Bronx for a week, and I'll mm -hmm. say, I'll set a, set a certain, um, oh, certain amount a certain kind of menu right and um you know people would choose they'll send me the money mm -hmm. uh through via cash app and stuff mm -hmm. like that and you can pick it up i send you my address so i'm much. assuming you you would you would bring a lot of your food to to work mm -hmm. when you're doing the construction oh well no i haven't even gotten a chance to sell my food at work because no. it's kind of illegal i wouldn't say it's illegal but they wouldn't want me doing that, but I, I still do it on the side because I work with a bunch of men, a bunch of construction workers mm. that love to eat. Right. And I love yeah, to cook. Yeah, that's why I'm assuming you would just like give them all this yeah. food and they would just be like, okay, how much, you know, for yeah for more of this food? I you wish know? I could um, make that a job. So I want to hit up on your, because uh, you had mentioned it when we first started talking about your mm -hmm. uh, African roots and, and the food that you grew up with. Um, being from the Bronx, uh, mm -hmm. did you find that your cuisine at home was very different from other people's cuisines at home? Oh. Because, you know, for me, I was around mostly Dominican Puerto Rican food, right? And I didn't really, really get exposed into other types of food until I got much older. Until you got much And even older. moved away from the Bronx a little bit. Now the Bronx is a, it's, it's way more diverse when it comes mm -hmm. to the food options. Absolutely. But growing up, it was just that. So what kind of cuisines did you have at home? And were they mm -hmm. something that you could relate to with other people? Like, did they know what kind of food you had mm -hmm. at home? I definitely had a fair share of different cuisines. Um, mm -hmm. My babysitter when I was young, she was 100% Dominican, mm. so I... Congratulations on that. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> she was 100% Dominican, so I'm talk. I... Oh, Spanish food all day. That's right? just, like, yeah. my thing. Absolutely. Um, but when it comes to the African food, I absolutely think there's a lot of comparison between... Uh, I would say, like, Puerto Rican and Dominican, like, in that range also. Mm -hmm. Like, f like, a lot of foreign. Um... Oh my gosh! Like, like name me one dish every... that maybe you grew up with at home that no one really understood. Yuca, like well, yams. Yeah, sure, yuca. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say that nobody would understand it, but not a lot of people like it. Not a, a lot of people eat it. Right. But that's one thing that we eat a lot, like within our culture. Like we uh, make it into fufu. It's like a dough kind of thing. You can eat it with soup. Okay. But I know within. Uh, like the Spanish, you guys, you do this, you make it with the soup. Like, right, is right. It is it, what is it called, sancocho or something? Sancocho, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Um, okay, Stuff so like we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about your mukbang videos because I'm super okay. fascinated oh about that whole thing going on. Really? Um, all okay. right, guys, grab yourselves a snack. Foodie Down Bronx, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm joined on set by home cook, cosmetologist, and YouTuber, local construction worker, <laughs> Misha, um, or Chef Misha, I should say. Um, so we have this beautiful spread here, uh, some really good smelling meat right here. What do we have exactly mm -hmm. going on right now? So right here, I just have some Philly cheesesteak. So this is mm. just some steak that I pre-seasoned. Mm -hmm. A couple of days ago, actually, I like okay. to have my food pre-seasoned. So all I have of that flavor is like... Yep. Situated in there, it's like married in yep, there. Yep, okay, it's all awesome. in there, and I have some sweet peppers, some red, 
green and yellow peppers. We have the uh, the Hawaiian sweet rolls. I love making it with the Hawaiian sweet rolls. Really? And then we have the provolone cheese and the Colby Jack cheese. Excellent. Now, before we get into this, uh, yes. I had mentioned that I wanted to ask you about mukbang videos. Mukbang videos. Mm -hmm. um, I know what they are in a very general sense, but I do not understand what they are. So can you explain to me what exactly happens in a mukbang video? Uh, and is it similar to ASMR? Or can it sort no. of be... Okay, so I'm still fairly new on mukbangs, okay. uh, but... Mukbangs are pretty much when you eat and you hold the convo mm -hmm. with your YouTube family. Okay. So whatever you want to eat, whatever you're eating for the day, you just get your camera, you prop it up. If you have a topic you want to talk about, right. you can share it with the YouTube and you just like to eat. It's so crazy because people really love to watch people eat. Yeah, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's where I'm, that's where I take pause. Yes. I'm like, I don't I don't really understand. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't understand it either. Like I'm I'm telling you, I did not understand. I'm like, why would I want to watch this person eat? But once, especially if you get a good, like if you see somebody with some good food, mm. I don't know what it is, but you just get drawn to it. I caught myself so many times, like, and then you just, I just get hungry right. all of a sudden too. I mean, I think, I think at the, at the most basic level, it's like it's a eating is a communal thing, right? So mm -hmm. like, it, it, you see other people eating, and then you feel like you want to partake in it. I can get that, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I'm like. Like ASMR confuses me. I don't understand ASMR what that is. ASMR. I mean, I know what it is. I just with don't. The fetishes. What's up with that, right? So that's why I assume that's maybe they were kind of similar <laughs> to like a mukbang video. I would say that. I would say that. I would say it's kind of similar, but I would say ASMRs are more like of a fetish because okay. some the sounds. Like the whispering. People and the, love that. Yeah, right. and it's the most weirdest thing, yeah. but people really love it. So the ASMR people love the hair of the. You have some people who hate to hear people eat, yeah. but the ASMR people love it. I'm talking about the eating all kinds of food sounds. I'm yeah, like, it's so interesting. I, I, you know, I when I go out to dinner, I tend to not, I don't, I don't look at people when they're eating. Mm -hmm. I just sort of like try to make intense eye contact, or I just <laughs> kind of don't. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, but you were smart enough to know there was a market for it, right? So you 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 mm -hmm. knew that you could go on YouTube and do a mukbang video and it'd be successful, because you do a pretty good job at it. I mean, you, you. You, you say that you're nervous on camera and this and that, but you're actually I doing am. a pretty good job. Um, on YouTube, do you also do uh, cooking videos? or you do? I do cooking videos, okay. I do hair videos, I try to... And hair videos? Yes. Do you, oh my gosh. I don't have one specific <laughs> niche for it, Do you do makeup videos too? For it, but okay. So your channel has just random things that you are good at, that yeah. you know how to do. It's a reflection of me, that's how I okay, feel. Perfect. Like my that's page perfect. is definitely a reflection of me. Um, I. I'm a person who likes to get into any and everything. Okay. So on my YouTube channel, you will see that I have, I will put them in playlists for people. That's so if great. you want to see hair videos, you want to see cooking videos, you want to see mukbangs, you want to see makeup, SFX makeup, right. vlogs. Right. So you're definitely like a renaissance time. woman. You do, yeah, you do everything. I love to do it. Do lot. you see, um, do you sometimes like look at your analytics and, and see what, is the most popular thing on your page? Like, is there yeah. is mukbang over something, or is, or is it the special effects well, makeup? I'm fairly new still on YouTube. I'm growing slowly but surely, but I would say it's my hair videos that are is kind sort of picking of up, the, and uh, the food, like the mukbangs. The mukbangs, people mukbangs. love mukbangs, yeah. So have you done this on your mukbang video? Have you have you uh, made these specific? No. No? No, not yet. No? I definitely want to, though. But you, d um, let me ask you this. Do you, um, is it all food that you've made? On yes. Your, okay. All home cooked food. I haven't had any outside food yet on my on that page. Okay. But everything is home cooked. Yes. So do you do like a video where you'll cook the thing that you end up eating on your mukbang? Um, I have. I I was. I really want to do that too. I was thinking about doing a mukbang slash recipe, but mm -hmm. usually I'll just make one video of the food that I made, and I'll probably do a mukbang the day after right. or the week later on. Right. The food. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into this. Let's um, let's prepare yes. uh, this Philly okay. cheesesteak. And um, again, you know, I'm so fascinated by like uh, all the things that you do. When do you have time to rest? Mm. When's the last time you slept? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm here running on like four hours of sleep. If you want to be technical, wow. <laughs> but um, because <laughs> um, I mean, again, you know, you know, you, just, I would I would assume yeah. that your construction job in and of itself is so time consuming. Yes. Right. Um, Absolutely. And so when you do your your cosmetology and your makeup, uh, yeah, when do you have time for, that, for all of that? I feel like, you know, like yesterday I well, was home writing all day and I felt tired. <laughs> I was just sitting and writing. And how do, you, how do you muster up the energy? 
Well, um, I'm going to break this in half. Okay, so we're actually, we're gonna, so we're putting on some provolone cheese, right? Yes, so we're going to put some your... provolone cheese on the bottom. I mm -hmm. start with the provolone cheese at the bottom. Okay. Usually I like it to be a nice and melty, but it's okay. Oh, it's all I'll good. just put this right we'll, here, we'll, we'll work with what we have for now. No, we'll it, improvise absolutely, with it. absolutely. Okay, awesome. Provolone for the right base the and okay. the Colby Jack for the top. Perfect. Yeah, so tell me, how, how do you find this time? How do you, how do, you do it? Hmm. What's your, like, what's your day well, today? I, I'm assuming that, like, right after this, you're going to be doing something else. Well, yeah, I do have a couple of um, Halloween faces to do today. Wonderful, okay. <laughs> right, so today being Halloween, this is your busiest day, or, or is it, or for some reason, would it be another type of holiday that's busy for you? Um, I would say ha Halloween are probably, like, my busiest, and then, like, back to school when it comes to here and stuff like that. So mm. it varies. Okay. It kind of varies for me, but I do work six days a week, so I work Monday my to... Goodness. I work Monday to uh, Saturday. Um, I'm either doing eight to 10 hours. Mm -hmm. So I would try to balance it out. I mean, as far as food, I take pre-orders. So when you send the pre-orders, I know when to get the food ready for you. And right. I would, you know, it just gives me time to prioritize, even though it is just, it's not easy. Like I, 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 <laughs> it, I can so only much. imagine <laughs> how, how not easy it is for you. Um, all right, so we're gonna jump in so with yeah. the- um, So we, um, for the base, we did the provolone, mm -hmm. and for the top, I did the Kobe Jack cheese. Kobe Jack, beautiful. And this is the steak. All right. I'm just gonna. I'm excited to try this out. I'm excited for you. So, what exactly will you be painting today um, for Halloween? Okay, so today's face, uh, I have to do scar from Lion King. Very somebody nice. wants to do Scar. Very cool. Okay. I actually did that for somebody last week. Um, another person wants, like, just a zombie look, like mm -hmm. a blown out face. Very cool. Really gross. Mm -hmm. um, and... And do you get most of your clients through social? Like, through Instagram, yeah, through I Facebook? Yeah, I promote myself. Okay. I promote myself okay. a lot. Very cool. I promote myself, like, to the mm -hmm. core. So that's where m most of my clientele come from. Mm -hmm. And then people would you know, recommend me and stuff like that. Yeah. Ooh, fantastic. Mm. This mm. looks super delicious. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite. Of course, here you if go. I, uh, <laughs> if I end up having it all over my face, I apologize. It is okay. I have like, I, I hope have, you like it. <laughs> I lack uh, couth sometimes when it comes to eating properly, but let me try this out. It's, mm. All food is meant to be nasty, some foods. Mm. Mm -hmm. You like it? <laughs> it's, I'm glad you like it. It's very good. Mm. Is it flavor? Very flavorful. <laughs> okay, guys, stay connected with Misha on Instagram at Meals by Misha and SFX underscore Misha for her Halloween work. Well, guys, that is all for the show. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you to our guests today for joining us. Tune in every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. here on BronxNet Optimum 67 and Files 33. Also, tune in on the go at BronxNet.org and find us on YouTube. From BronxNet to the world, this is Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. Remember to feed your mind, feed your body, and if you see me coming along, feed me. Can I have my Joker? Please come and join me. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there you go. You want some of this? Yes. Have some of that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Adios.